Greetings everyone! Today I'm going to have a program demonstration of Module 8 Graph and Module 9 Sorting Technique. Since I mentioned about adjacency matrix for, uh, from Module 8, we will use the graph okay, ADT provided in our lecture and add an operation that creates graph using adjacency matrix. We will also revise the main program by including a main menu offering two ways of creating a graph. This is the graph that we will use to test our C++ program. As you can see, it is a directed graph. A directed graph is a set of vertices or nodes in our case connected by edges with each node connecting, okay, having a direction, having a direction associated with it. Edges are usually represented by arrows pointing into the, in the direction the graph can be traversed. Since we have in this example, we have zero, node zero is connected to node six by having an edge okay, or a line, arrows connecting to it. And we also have number two connected to zero, two connected to four. So those are the adjacent nodes connect. Uh, so those are the adjacent nodes for number two. We have four and zero. Three and one are connect adjacent numbers or adjacent nodes to number four and five is the only adjacent number four three and one we also have adjacent nodes for six which are nodes number one and node number seven with that being said allow me to direct you to our Codio environment since there's no standard template library for graph from our lecture we will use the algorithm provided to us to represent the graph. In our data.h, the information here is provided from our lecture, specifically in subtopic 2. This also allows us to follow the code for our constructor and functions to represent its, uh, its operations. In our case, the add edge is responsible for populating the adjacency list. And the print graph is responsible for displaying the nodes on our console. Since there is no standard template library for graph from our lecture, we will use the algorithm provided to us to represent the graphs. Uh, in our data.h, the information here is provided from our lecture, specifically in subtopic 2. This also follows the code for our constructor and functions to represent its operations. In our case, the add edge is responsible for populating the adjacency list, while the print graph is responsible for displaying them on our console. Okay, so let us now visit the implementation.cpp, which houses the definition of the codes or program statements intended for print graph and add edge. Okay, so we do we do have two parameters for add edge that we will use for uh, an index for our adjacent and our pushback okay, pushback method. We also have the print graph here that will display information onto our console. So this is uh, again responsible for displaying them individually onto our screen. Now next we will visit our main cpp file okay in this file uh, we will try to dis display the adjacency list first okay then we will go with the adjacency matrix uh, after this single dimensional array okay, so let us try okay so as you can see we have the adjacency list that follows the powerpoint Okay, so we have here uh, 2 connected to 4 and 0. And if we have to check from our code view, we have 2 adjacent to 0. And it is also adjacent to number 4, which is, again, okay, aligned to uh, the specification okay, of this graph. And then we also have to inspect if 6 is connected to 1 and 7 let us see if it is adjacent yes it is okay 
So we can use this table to test if we are doing it right. So this is now the modified version from of our original code class definition. Because if we are going to make an adjacency matrix, we will need a dynamic 2D array. Because the size of the array would determine once the user encoded the number of vertices and the edges connecting these vertices. Which means we cannot determine it right away. We cannot say that the size of the matrix is 4x4 four four or 3x3. Three three. We need the program to determine the size of the array based on the vertices and the edges. So we will declare a dynamic to the array by typing int space double asterisk adjacent number 2. The two asterisk indicates that we are declaring a dynamic to the array whereas a single asterisk is for a single dimensional array. This time I added add edge to function for adjacency matrix to represent the graph and also print graph number 2 to generate the matrix. Okay? So we expect them to be the contents found in our implementation CPP. So again, we need this to print the graphs and this one for populating our matrix. Okay, so we now have menu for adjacency list. We will get the adjacency list okay, here, which follows okay, the test data. If we try to run the application once again, okay, we will try this time number two. Okay, so we now have okay, the matrix okay, that allows us to see the intersection of the nodes okay, which can be connected to each other. If they are represented with one in their intersection, then that means that those, those nodes are adjacent to each other. Since we now have one and six okay, to be intersected, uh, having an, a value of one, we can now say that they are connected okay, to each other. Let us try to, to visit our PowerPoint. So we have here 6 and 1, which means that that is true, to have 6 and 1 connected or adjacent to each other. Now let us try to inspect the 6 and 7 module uh, nodes if they are adjacent okay, to our program. 6 and 7 is actually connected because they are toggled with a value of 1. Okay. They represent uh, a situation where they are connected or adjacent to each other. So all of those that are represented with one are adjacent to each other. Their intersection tells it all. Okay, That will be it for module number 8. Now we move on to the sorting topic. Okay, In this challenge, you will have to create a separate library that will store the bubble sort algorithm provided in the lecture. We will convert your class into a template so that it can sort data of any type. We will use a car or float data type for your data and set up a constant array with contents which will not require user inputs. So if it's going to be a user defined library with a template, you will need two files okay, to, to accomplish this. First, the main CPP and the data.h. Having them said, you will place them together, okay, the class definition and the operations in the data.h. Majority of the changes will be done in the data.h. Our data.h here is already a library that makes use of a template. This will be what it looks like. It is a combination of our implementation.cpp and our class declaration. We will be including okay, the if and def okay, to enclose the entire file, which is useful in enclosing the class definition and the function class. Okay all of the function in the class. So this is something new here. 
Okay, we will use the template class T. We will use it as an alias of the, the data type. It is because we will not determine or specify any data type in our program. So in essence, this particular library includes the bubble sort. So instead of making the bubble sort flexible of being capable of sorting any primitive data type, it can now sort based in the declaration that the user will do in the program. So um, it is like the data type is represented by a variable t, okay, here. So let's take a look at this. So we have here the asterisk a. Okay? So our asterisk a is our dynamic array, which is the array that will be sorted by the bubble sort. So instead of specifying a data type beside it, I use t. Okay? Meaning to say, the type is not determined. Okay? Next, the, the n is the length of the array being defined by being declared of data type int next all these okay functions we have the sort bubble sort and uh, display okay are part of our declarations okay and these are the functions of our bubble sort the constructor will be responsible for obtaining the array and the size of the array from the main program into the class. Okay, for each functions, you have to put the template class T. Okay, so we have here the template class T on top of every sort. Okay, so you need that template first. Okay, to be written before you define the function. And then instead of specifying the name of the class, you will also need to specify the template T before the double columns so we have here the double columns we need to specify it uh, you need to specify the t here okay before that okay so instead of our uh, our original uh, function we will have to specify this okay so that being said okay that will be specified for the rest of our functions okay, in our file now this is now our program for main pro, main that cpp. So we have here the declaration for uh, character b array that holds the value or these elements key. Okay? So we have here the sort and we also have the data type car which will be needed by our alias t. Next we also have here the name of our object I call it as X in this case okay. and in order for us to uh, pass it to our uh, data that H we also need to comply with the data uh, with the data type and here we have the, the array name okay being passed onto this parameter next we also have here the the name of our object okay to invoke our function bubble sort let us try now our program and here we have the the output okay that has the past one two three four five six seven in order for it to completely sort the elements next going back to our main that cpp we will have other example here for sorting numeric values we will have the int data type and float data type here so we have int b to represent our variable uh, array okay containing 1 0 5 3 and 2 okay, and they will be sorted out with the use of these lines okay and our on our float we have these sets of elements okay placed on our c array and to comply with the format for our function sort we need to uh, encode the respective data type followed by the name of our assigned object then we'll need to encode also the name of our array and the size of that array so again those are the parameters needed to be encoded inside 
the the function as well with this we will now be able to invoke the bubble sort with this number letter y that bubble sort and let us try now the program on how how it will look like when we try to run this program so we'll need to save first our file before we do anything here okay now we have the output for bubble sorting the bubble uh, applying bubble sort for our integer data type and bubble sort for float data type values okay so that will be all for our demo thank you very much and i hope this video will be able to help you out with your project